Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Look around you. We, the people, are speaking today loudly and clearly. Speaking on behalf of that girl there in the tree whose sign says, Stop putting me in debt. I don't have a job yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when a conservative doesn't want to buy a gun, that person just doesn't buy a gun. When a liberal doesn't want to buy a gun, he wants to pass a law so that none of the rest of us can buy a gun. When a conservative has doubts about religion and is searching for religion, it's a personal and individual quest. When a liberal has doubts about religion, a law must be passed to prevent the rest of us from doubting or going to religion. The difference, ladies and gentlemen, is between freedom and tyranny. The difference is the mindset of liberty, where we are the tolerant people, always characterized as intolerant. We are the most tolerant people. We expect people to be individuals. We expect people to be different. The liberals want everybody to goose step to the same parade, and we're not going to do it. You all know this is the first stop of many in the Tea Party Express 2, and many people will be speaking to that. But it is fitting and proper that we are here today in the shadow of this magnificent warship, the USS Midway. <laughs> Commissioned in 1945, this ship saw service through and including the Gulf War as the flagship of the fleet. Have you all toured this ship? Yeah. For all those years, it was on the forefront of liberty, promising instant death to our enemies in such a convincing way that it almost never had to do it. That is called deterrence and peace through strength. I just don't understand, and I hope you will join me in not understanding, peace through butt-kissing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I was a child, I heard the famous child story about the emperor that had no clothes. The emperor that was so vain, so narcissistic, that he felt that anything he wore, of course, was to be praised by everyone in the kingdom. And one day, wearing absolutely nothing, he took in the praise of all of his subjects as to the finery he was wearing, as to the wonderful clothes he had donned, as to the latest fashion that he had mastered. Until somebody in the crowd said, ain't got any clothes on! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Obama has no clothes on! <laughs> when he presumes in his arrogance to know how better to spend the money that you work hard for, he has no clothes on. That's not right. When he presumes, when he presumes to tell us what we're going to do when we get sick, who, what doctor we're going to go to, how we're going to handle all that stuff, some bureaucrat is going to decide for us because it's in our best interest, he has no clothes on. It's not right. When he presumes to tell us what food is, have you seen the Food Administration legislation making its way through Congress? They're going to define what food is. And if you share your backyard garden proceeds with your neighbor or at a farmer's market, you better have it labeled. You better follow the federal rules on farming. Ladies and gentlemen, as we saluted the flag, the flag is still here. It's still proudly waving. The question is, over what country is it waving? The question is, are we still in the footsteps of, in the spirit of, are we still in the mold of, Sam Adams, and all of those people who served on that ship, are we worthy to be Americans? Stand up today, America. Stand up today. Stand up for our freedom, because it isn't free. It isn't automatic. It won't be automatically passed along to succeeding generations. What will be passed along is tyranny and debt if we are not successful. We must be successful.
So every place this Tea Party stops, in every little town and large city throughout this country, it's going to be carrying the message that you start here today, that you start on this harbor in beautiful San Diego, in the shadow of this magnificent warship, in the spirit of America, in the spirit of defense, in the spirit of the defense of our liberties, our traditional liberties. We took them for granted for too long. We took them for granted for too long. We've got to stand up, we've got to fight, because they're disappearing in front of our eyes. This year, next year, the year after, this is a fight that takes the rest of our lives. I will not give to my grandchildren and their grandchildren a country that is not as free as the one I was born in. I will not. Ladies and gentlemen, as I look around, I couldn't be prouder to be a San Diegan, kick off of this great event, and to be an American. Look at the flags, look at the signs, they're all handmade. No union thugs, no acorn. I know I'm in the right group. I'm in the right group. Now here's what we've got to do, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to realize not everybody's here, but enough people are here to make change. Enough people are here to turn this around. Enough people are going to be in every place this place stops to turn it around. It doesn't take everybody. I know a lot of people get, get concerned. They get disappointed. They get discouraged. All my friends, oh, they're just in a cloud, and they think Obama's the greatest. Uh, no, they really don't. They haven't yet said so, but they're having the same doubts you are. Bring them out. Bring them out of the closet, into the light, into the light of liberty. Bring them out. Bring your friends out. Make it happen. This is a groundswell that starts here and becomes a tsunami on Washington, D.C. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this bright sunny day, let's remember, freedom isn't free. We've got to work for it. We've got a lot of work to do. God bless. Thank you.